Okay, we had to ship to the last location, so we'll uh, pop these open. These basically are going to replace the uh, the main bolts through the uh, leaf springs and go through this this bracket that we're going to pull out here. You gonna help? All right. For this, I'll do it like so. And then these tie in on each side underneath next to the leaf springs. It'll clamp together so that, that doesn't move and it just stiffens up the entire suspension. Keeps everything running vertical. Your springs and everything and that way there's there's support from your eye frame or eye beam going uh, up and down, but there's not very much lateral support side to side. So when you get on rough roads, uh, this will really help stiffen everything up. Okay, so by taking the weight off of the wheels and lifting it up using the jacks, we've got the the uh, best spots for lifting with the uh, camper. And it also unsprings any any uh, weight that you might have or unloads the springs. So then when we get in there to take everything off, all I'll have to do is just use the uh, jack underneath the, the corner of the uh, axles to realign everything for being able to put everything back on. So it should, should make it easy. Unfortunately, you got to have an extender because of the uh, because of the way the hub is here. Need a breaker bar for that one, huh? All right, that's why it's always handy to have a breaker bar. All right, quick trip over to Napa. We got uh, some extra parts, basically because our hangers for the leaf springs already have a welded uh, V into them, you can't put the bracket on the inside of the hanger. Um, so I got some longer grade eight bolts that match everything, but we'll go all the way through so I can go around the outside of that bracket. We picked up a couple extra sleeves for the lubricated bolts, um, just so those could be replaced at the same time. We also, when I pulled the tires off, found that we had uh, one of the lines for the uh, brakes was pinched. Um, it's still functioning, but I, I want to get that replaced. So, picked up some extra uh, quarter inch brake line, a cutter, and some compression fittings to replace that at the same time all around it there. So, and then uh, time, to, time to clean the air filter. So, we're going to just get this all done, and uh, I guess it'll just be a day of chores got everything off uh, the other day I was able to put the braces on super easy up here all there is is two of these uh, holder bolts and then you replace the uh, single single bolt going through the eye on the leaf springs uh, and go across uh, tip would be to start with the larger size so that you're not having to piece them together you can do that underneath and then use a jack or something just to lift in the middle give you a little wiggle room on both sides and then tighten everything down um, super easy but when we pull that off uh, went to put the tire back on and we were getting s some serious wobble on this wheel and uh, so something was going on. You've got a uh, single single nut that holds into the uh, spindle and uh, when I open this up we've got a lot of play but you can see the uh, grease is all black in here um, indicating that it's gotten really hot and burned. So um, got all new uh, all new bearings and everything to basically go ahead and repack and replace the bearings. And uh, hopefully we pull this off and the spindle's in good shape, but um, pretty straightforward. This one just has a, uh, a little keeper on the end of it. Some of them you'll have a, a cotter pin holding it in place. Um, and then you've got your dust cover over here. That just kind of gets knocked off in a normal one. This is actually one for uh, oil. So it's, uh, it's a, it screws into the end of the hub here um, because we upgraded to the uh, electric over hydraulic disc brakes it just screws in there so just unscrew that pull that and then these are all these are hand tight so um, pretty pretty easy to do this to pull it off and then we'll make the adjustment when we go back on this should be red but with it being uh, being dark like that you can tell it's completely burned up and these bearings you can tell we're actually getting movement inside of that so 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fool with trying to save any of this. I'm sure if I clean that off, it's gonna show it's all it's all uh, pitted or or screwed up. I'm sure it's gotten hot at this point. So we're not gonna try and save those. We're gonna replace them for the cost of uh, new bearings and peace of mind. That's the game plan. So all we're doing, we're actually we got new seals, so we don't have to worry about trying to save them. And that way we can kind of screw them up on the way out and not really worry about it. There we go. Sometimes you can do it from a punch from the other side. Depends on how they're in there. When I did that, you can see that dropped a lot, a lot of dirt and stuff in there, but we're gonna clean it out. You can see how black that is. Definitely been leaking. Okay, got the new new bearings here. Just popped them off. Pop them out of there. We gotta we gotta grease those bad boys. That's a number two grease here. And again, if you've got a better way to do this, I know there's a tool that you can just press everything through. Let me know in the comments if uh, if you use one of those tools, if you like it, or uh, if it makes it faster, or if it's worth carrying around in a camper with limited space. Basically, we're gonna go crazy here. Back side of this. You can see it's starting to kind of work through and up. I'm just gonna work around. Ew. There we go, and that's what we want to see. From everything I've read and what I've been told is you just want to see it coming up through there and work all the way around and make sure it's doing that on all all the way around the uh, the bearing. Make sure that, that it's just completely good. packed full of grease. And I'm sure that people that do this all the time are a heck of a lot smoother and uh, a lot less messy. Kind of load up that cavity a little bit since we're going to have to pump some in there anyway. Put that down in there. Come over here and get all the excess grease off of this spindle. Get it cleaned up. You see there's part of the seal the the uh, spring that's in the seal got jammed in there, and, which would make sense because then when we're greasing it, it was clogging up that uh, greasing hole and probably weren't getting new grease back in there. Combine that with the new or with a uh, leak in that back seal. You are sitting underneath the table. Dad's underneath the couch. Are you dad's assistant today? Yeah. yeah. Are you on your 10 minute mandatory snack break? Yeah. yeah. All right, so from everything I read, this is it's more important not to have uh, over tight than, than slightly loose. Obviously you wanna make sure you're not having play um, side to side and any movement there. But, you know, a couple rotations went with the tire on the, the uh, gravity keeping it moving is a good thing. Double checking that nothing sounds weird, everything looks good. So this doesn't have a castle nut, uh, it just has regular, uh, I think it's one and a quarter or one and a, one and a three eighths inch nut on the end. And then it has this little keeper here to just keep it from backing off or rotating. I just double checked all the play and everything looks good and, and we'll go from there. All right, we got the brake line pulled off here. This is, uh, you see where the suspension had come up and where this happened to be mounted was right above the suspension and had almost touched the frame. It wasn't completely closed, but it uh, definitely pinched that. So we went down and got ourselves a flange tool. That's super easy, about 30 bucks at any of the auto stores. Basically creates the flanges on the end so you can just replace your hydraulic lines. Got that uh, taken care of, cut the link, put the uh, replacement one in. So now we gotta bleed the brakes and we'll be, uh, be ready to go on that, that front. So a couple of the bolts and the screws are stripped so we had to end we ended up having to cut them off and this is the end result so we'll be replacing those fun times. So this is the hangers. When you're taking this off pro tip go ahead and pull the hangers because uh, you've got enough wiggle room here that it's just a lot easier to go with either the new shackles or pull it all the way off, get these taken care of and then and then put it on with the new shackles to, or the hangers to go in there see where this is actually worn to the point where 
it'll actually come completely off. It's not supporting anything, any of the weight. It's all loose in there now. It's just completely worn out. And this was the culprit as to why we bought, bought new ones. You can see on new ones, they come with the upgraded brass sleeves, so that's good. You can see there's there's absolutely no wiggle room in this rubber. I guess it's a it's a gasket or a bushing that kind of supports that weight to give you the travel. We're gonna go put that back in with the new shackles and should be good to go. Thanks for watching this week's episode. We completed all of our RV repairs. Now we have eight days to make it to Yuma, Arizona, so stay tuned.